Hey, what's up you guys? It's your girl Toy back with another video. Sorry it's been so long, senior year of college, been kinda busy. Um, but we're back and it's summer break, so we chill it. <laughs> if you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today's video is going to be 10 things about PNES. If you have been on my channel for literally any length of time, you probably know that I have PNES, so spreading accurate information about the disorder is extremely important to me. So let's just get this party started, yeah? Let's just dive in. You get it? Dive? Dive in? Like a swimming pool? No, <laughs> we're cutting that out. Blood through this shit. Okay, we are going to start simple. Fact one. What does PNES stand for? PNES stands for Psychogenic Non-Epileptic Seizures. I know, a mouthful. That's why I was shortened down. PNES. Fact two. What is PNES? The simplest way I can use to describe it is it is a physical manifestation of psychological distress or trauma. So a basic example to help you better understand that is blushing when you're embarrassed. Embarrassment, you know, more psychological, blushing, physical. Catch my drift? Picking up what I'm putting down? No, I'm cutting that out. Anyways. <laughs> Fact three. PNES is actually part of the family, if you will, of somatic symptoms slash conversion disorders. That, I would explain that, but that's literally its own separate video. It's really interesting though, so I would encourage you to just look it up because it's really interesting. And you might learn some stuff. Fact four. Four. Fact four is that PNES usually begins in young adulthood, but it can sometimes occur in adolescence. It is also the most common non-epileptic event in school age children and adolescents. So, there's a little tidbit for you. Okay, fact five is that a history of sexual and physical abuse is a common risk factor. Now, that does not mean that every person who has been abused physically or sexually develops this disorder. It just means that you are more at risk if you have been physically or sexually abused. Fact six. We're already more than halfway done, guys. How is PNEN diagnosed? I'm so glad you asked. It's fairly difficult to diagnose because it is not epileptic. It cannot be seen in any tests that would normally be done on a person who is thought to have epilepsy. So the most common test that kind of helps rule out epilepsy and diagnose PNES is called a video EEG. I actually have a video of me vlogging the video EEG that I went through. So I will have that video attached at the end so that y'all can check it out if you want to. So <laughs> pretty much a video EEG is an EEG, which is putting electrodes and leads on your head to measure your brain waves and what's happening in your old noodle. And anyways, it measures what's happening in your brain. And then video is literally what it sounds like. There's a video camera and it watches you the whole time, which is kind of uncomfy because it's literally someone watching your every move. But, I, hey, I, it's, it's uncomfortable, but you know what? Do what you need to do. You know what I mean? You got to entertain yourself somehow. Um, I, 
made a dancing TikTok, which I will insert now. Why don't you say so? Fact seven, how is PNES treated? So because it does not have to do with brainwaves like epilepsy does, there is no medication to treat PNES. However, therapies are often used to treat PNES. Stuff like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is what I go through with my therapist. There's prolonged exposure therapy, mindfulness-based tactics, a whole bunch of stuff that you can do to help reduce your seizures. Okay, getting into statistics. Fact eight, gotta look at my computer for these numbers because, girl, there's a lot of them and I ain't trying to get them wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, fact eight is about misdiagnoses. Misdiagnoses. Misdi you, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, so, one out of every four to five people admitted to a video EEG that are diagnosed with drug-resistant epilepsy have been found to actually have non-epileptic events. One out of every four to five people, that's a pretty decent amount, guys. Like, that's kind of mind-boggling. The other statistic for misdiagnosis is that at least 25% of people diagnosed with epilepsy who have been found to be drug resistant. <laughs> at least 25% of people who have been diagnosed with drug resistant epilepsy have actually been found to be misdiagnosed. 25%, it may not sound like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, that's a lot. You know? Mind explosion. Anyways. Fact nine. Prevalence. How prevalent is PNES? And y'all, this shocked me to my very core. Shocked me. 2 to 33 people per 100,000 have PNES. That makes it nearly as prevalent as multiple sclerosis, which most of y'all have probably heard of multiple sclerosis. But I doubt any of you, if some, maybe a very few, have heard of PNES. What's going on with that? Fact 10, I'm going to try to keep this short, but I am very passionate about this one because I have had terrible experiences with this. PNES is not fake. The physical symptoms these people are experiencing are very real. They cannot control them. They cannot stop when they want to. They, they do not induce these things i they don't want to have seizures would you want to have a seizure you know like it, this is not brought on by those people they are not to blame they have no control over it they are not faking it period i could do a whole video about that and <clears throat> i actually have a fact 11 Oh, 11. Got y'all bonus fact. Boom, boom. Get you some extra knowledge. PNES is among the most common functional neurological disorders. Sorry, what? Who knew? Who kn You do now. You do. Big brain. Ew. <laughs> okay, you guys, that is it for today's video. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to see more of my beautiful face. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, 
The links to all the resources I have used to make today's video will be in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching and I have a treat before before we uh, head out. So just, just, just give me a second. Okay, I would like to introduce y'all to Sunny. Say hi, Sunny boy. Sunny is in training to be my service dog. I am going to take y'all along for the ride of getting him through training and getting him to being a full-fledged service dog. Yay! That's a surprise, cause dog. Cause he's the cutest baby. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. That's it. Say bye, Sonny. <laughs>